Hi, and welcome to the uh, NC State Muscadine uh, Pruning Webinar. We, we are talking today about Muscadine Pruning, Training and Renovation. I am your host, uh, Mark Hoffman. I am the Small Fruits Extension Specialist at NC State University. Um, so this is a lot of ground. Uh, this is why we decided to do three videos instead of one. And uh, in the first video, we will cover uh, pruning habits and trunk diseases, and we will also talk about correct training. In the second video, we will talk about growth control with the correct pruning strategies. And in the third video, we will talk about vignette renovation. Um, so uh, before we start, I would like to talk about a little bit about the names which we use. So uh, uh, we are on a spur pruning system with muscadines and muscadines do have a trunk, a, a spur and a cordon. Um, uh, these are the three uh, areas which, these are the three uh, 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 terms which we use a lot over the, uh, the next couple of minutes in this, in this talk. So now I want to go a little bit about what the main goals of pruning is before we start talking about how to prune correctly. Um, the main goals in, of pruning are not just your yield control. Of course, you do want to control your yield by pruning correctly. But you also have under other long-term goals if you prune your, your vineyard. And the first one is longevity and healthy wood. So you can really affect your vine a lot by doing the correct pruning and you can help uh, with longevity and the health in your vineyard um, by uh, uh, doing the right pruning cuts. And uh, just wanna, um, uh, so first we will, I, I will first give you some pictures and examples uh, of pruning habits, which I have uh, seen in the last couple of years here in North Carolina. And then also some examples of what is a better pruning and training technique, uh, which ensures a little bit more longevity in your, in your muscadine vineyard. So uh, the first thing I wanna show are um, antlers. Um, so in this example, for, uh, you, 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 you see here, this is a cordon, which has a lot of those long, uh, spur fruiting positions, um, which then uh, have like this kind of mushroom forming um, uh, 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 fruiting wood at the top. Um, there's a lot going on in this picture. The, 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 that is number one. Number two is that you do have unevenly distributed fruiting positions here as well. So you do have a fruiting position here, you have a fruiting position here, a fruiting position here and the fruiting position here, but you do not have one here, which is missing. And then you have one, uh, you don't have one here, which is also missing. So you have an uneven distribution of fruiting positions as well. So you do have uh, antler formation in this, in this vineyard and, and on this particular vine, and you also do have fr uh, missing fruiting positions. And that is something which a lot of you guys uh, probably have in your vineyard because that is you, in, in the muscadine vine you can get to this point very very quickly and uh, but you can also avoid this point by the correct training and by the correct pruning methods um, so now uh, i also want to show you some pruning cuts how you get into this very quick so do you can see here this is this is a one year old wood so this is wood which was developed last year this is wood which was developed two years ago, and this all is wood which was developed three years ago. So three years ago, only three years ago, this entire position grew into space already. So this is a, a very good example of how you can develop a antler-like or those mushroom-like positions in not a lot of time. You can see here that this is already developing into like a mushroom-like uh, uh, form where you do not have any fruiting positions coming out here of the lower part of the um, uh, 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 antler. So uh, that is something which we this which we see a lot. And again, this can be avoided by by um, the correct pruning and the correct training parts. Another part which I do would like to show is also here. What you can see here in this in this uh, in this cordon. Uh, of a, a Carlos muscadine vine um, is also very similar things really. So you can see that first of all, you have uneven distribution of positions uh, along this cordon. 
you also don't have a very straight and uh, trained cord and it kind of like goes from the upper here into the lower here and it has not a very straight developed um, uh, cordon. And you can see here, I kind of marked the positions where they all are. And you see here, you have like a cluster of positions here and then you have like a big gap here where you only have four positions on probably two or three foot of cordon. And then you go back into like a little bit more clustering on this side. So this is very common, which we see in, 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 in muscadines, that you have this uneven positioning of, uh, of fruiting positions, which will affect your yield, but also your ripening, et cetera, et cetera. And that can also uh, be avoided with a better pruning and better training um, techniques. Um, Another thing which we which we see a lot in muscadines is uh, this scenario where you do have uh, a your, your cordon is basically split uh, because it was growing a, a, along the inside the wire. Again, that can also be avoided with uh, the correct training uh, te techniques. Um, so I want to show you also a good example. Um, this is a good example. This is a seven or eight year old vine, um, and you can see here that you do have some of the issues which I showed uh, going on here as well. So you do have a little bit of the wire uh, growing into the wine. Uh, but what you do also have here is, a, is very equally established positions and very slow growing positions with the exception of this one here. Every of, every of those positions is growing very slowly, which means you do not have to make a lot of big cuts over the lifetime of this cordon. Um, so again, just to go a little bit over a terminology for you, um, uh, we always talk about trunk is this part of the wine and then cordon is this. And then the fruiting spurs uh, are the, are the, uh, are the uh, uh, spurs that are, that, that are established at your fruiting positions. And the muscadine wine can have quite a bit of fruiting positions. We usually talk about uh, uh, three to four fruiting positions per foot of cordon. Um, and uh, what uh, we really want to do is let the wine uh, develop those structures really slowly and, and establish fruiting positions early and keep them. So that is, that is you, you establish your fruiting positions through training and you let those structures grow through pruning. And this is what we're going to learn today. And um, so now the question becomes why that is important. And uh, that is important to reduce uh, the desiccation in the, in, the, in the wood, which means uh, to reduce the amount of dead wood you will have in the vine. The more big cuts you make and the closer they are to your permanent structures, the more dead wood you will have in your wine, which then impacts uh, sap flow, uh, water flow, as well as carbon nutrient storage, which you will need for uh, good fruit development a year later. Um, it also reduces the impact of grapevine trunk diseases. Uh, those are diseases which can go into open wounds. And um, I'm just going to show you a picture, a couple of pictures, how this looks like. So this is, a, this is an open wound which we got through cold damage, which was not attended and not renovated. And uh, we can see here that this part of the, of the wine is completely dead. And you had even some growth here, which then also died off. Uh, in the actually same year. So that is very common. If you do have unattended wounds, a lot of those wounds can be caused by cold damage or by pruning. And I want to show you a couple of more examples. This is a trunk and uh, just a piece of a trunk. Those were the two cordons. And if you cut this trunk in the middle, you can see here that this is all desiccated wood. This is dead wood, which does not transport any nutrients in any, in, or any, or any, um, or any uh, water and uh, the same on the other side of, of the cordon. And that is very common uh, and is a very normal process in crepes that they react to wounds by desiccation. And we'll talk about this in, in, a, in a little bit. Um, another example of a muscadine is here. This is a picture which, which of a muscadine that, that had cold damage, again, a physical wound, which then um, allowed, uh, uh, which then was not attended and basically e eventually did kill the entire wine by desiccation. Um, an example of a healthy wine is this. Um, you can see here, again, this typical desiccation, uh, 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 meth uh, this typical desiccation, which happens in the wine as a physiological reaction to a wound is happening here as well. But 
you do have uh, undisturbed sap flow on, 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 in the underneath the vine. Um, um, you have undisturbed sap flow underneath the vine to, uh, that will allow you to continuously grow your, your, um, your, your grapes. So that is extremely important that your sap flow is not, uh, is not disturbed inside the wine. And you can do a lot about this by doing the right pruning cuts. So now, there are several reasons why that can happen. Uh, usually physical damage, that's a typical reaction of a vine to, to, uh, to um, react uh, to physical damage by desiccation. And physical damage can come through cold damage or other physical damage that through machinery, but also through wrong bruning and training techniques. Um, and grapevines do not produce a callus. Um, most of perennial uh, crops do produce a callus around the wound, which means you can make a wound very close to the permanent wood. It's actually recommended for most uh, uh, pruning techniques, and that wound will be closed by a callus. That is not the case with grapevines. Grapevines react physiologically to those wounds by uh, growing uh, desiccated uh, wood to a certain extent to close that wound. Um, which means if you do close cuts to the cordon on the spur, you bring desiccation into your permanent structure. I can show you how that is. Um, so this is, uh, this is a typical example. You can see here that uh, if you do uh, cut, if you do cut, there's a certain amount of uh, desiccation which is happening on your grapevine cut. So we often leave a cone for desiccation to develop as a reaction to the pruning. If you do cut too close or through your basal bud here, then you often have desiccated wood going into your, into your um, permanent wood, which is, do, which is something you do wanna avoid because that will interrupt sap flow. Wounds like this can also uh, attract diseases, trunk diseases. Uh, those are fungal pathogens, which then also can go, into the, can go into the wound and cause even more desiccation and more damage to your vine. And often you have a mix of uh, desiccated wood through your pruning and desiccated wood through trunk diseases in, a, uh, a, in an older mature muscadine vine. So correct pruning can avoid a lot of that and uh, will make your vine a lot uh, healthier and, and your wine will, will, will also um, live longer and the corn will produce more fruit and you will have more even shoot and, and fruit growth if you can ensure that your sap flows uh, regularly through the wood. Um, so I wanna give you a couple of more uh, uh, examples here. You see here, this was a cut which was made very close to the trunk and um, and you can see here the upper part, the desiccation basically grew into the into the uh, cordon structure and has grown has been uh, grown ever since, so that you only have healthy wood in the lower part of that cordon. So now, as an example for a, a pruning cut where we left some desiccated uh, area here, so you can see here that there was some desiccation going on here, but the overall uh, pruning the overall structure of the vine, the overall inside uh, structure of the cordon is still healthy and can still transport nutrients. And that is a situation that you want to have. Um, so now you can do a lot uh, by um, pruning and uh, you can also do a lot wrong with pruning. And you can see here, uh, some of the cuts which were made here, especially the cut which was, made, which was made this year, is very, very close to the actual cordon structure. And those are cuts which, for example, are not wanted in a muscadine. You want to have a, an area like somewhere, some, some like this size, or at least the, the length of the diameter of, of the wood you're cutting um, to leave for desiccation on a, on a grape one. That's extremely important because this will desiccate and will cause desiccation inside the permanent structure. Um, so now, uh, the first, there are two ways to, 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 uh, to do this. The, the, the first way is to do it right from the very beginning. And that has a lot to do with grapevine training. Um, so we're gonna first talk about training and how to train a muscadine vine correctly. And then we will talk about how, in another video, we will talk about how to um, prune a muscadine correctly. And then we will talk about how to renovate. If you do already have uh, some damage, how can you renovate your wine in a manner that is uh, helpful to you? 
Um, so now training. Um, so you can avoid this desiccation and you can avoid uh, this uneven establishment of fruiting positions uh, by correct training and you can control your fruiting spur growth with the correct pruning. So we'll talk first about training and then, by, and then about pruning. Just to give you a quick example of how uh, you need to think about your muscadine wine while you're training your wine already. So usually our wine is trained on a single wire, uh, high wire bilateral cordon system um, in a spur pruning, in a spur pruning uh, system. And uh, we usually have 10 foot of cordon on, on each side of a wine. Uh, and then we do have usually two to three positions per cordon, two to three fruiting spurs per cordon. And if you establish your wine already, if you train your wine, you need to envision what the structure of your wine will be later on. And you can see that here in this picture very well. Um, you can see here that you do have fruiting positions. They're often going into different directions. It depends a lot on the cultivar in which directions they will go, but they often go, go uh, upwards and downwards. And, um, and you really have to see those positions already when you start um, laying down your first cord. And usually they come out of each note, uh, of each uh, butt, um, you do have one positions per button. That's the reason why some of those positions go down and some of those positions go up. Um, so uh, again, it is very important to directly think about the correct positioning in, if, of, of your, of your fruiting positions. You can see here, for example, on the way up, this area here has been kept clean. So you do not want to establish any fruiting positions in this, in this area, but you do want to start with your first fruiting positions at the wire. So you do not want to have fruiting positions below the wire. You do want to have your first fruiting positions at the wire. And then you can see here, each of this fruiting position has been growing very slowly um, with the exception of one or two. And that is extremely important in order to avoid a lot of those large cuts, which then can make, bring a lot of desiccation into your, into your vineyard. Um, so if you if you look at this, you really have to envision that your fruiting positions will grow over time in something like this. So you, your spur position will grow every time a little bit like this. Um, so now uh, on a 20 foot vine spacing and with two 10 foot cordons, we usually uh, uh, talk about two to three, um, uh, three to four fruiting positions per foot of cordon. We usually have two to three foot distance uh, two cordon from the wire to the cordon, uh, two to three foot distance from the uh, uh, post to the cordon. And we usually pre-prune with a trimmer. Um, so we, we have, uh, depending on the vigor, there are some cultivars, cultivars where you can keep 30 to 40 number of butts per foot of cordon. Those would be spaced out over two to three uh, fruiting positions. And with some cultivars like Supreme, you do want to be lower than that. And you want to be like around 20 to 30 butts per foot of cordon um, over a 20 foot vine spacing. So um, as I said, positions need to be established and kept early. And that usually happens during vine establishment. And if we think about vine establishment we, and vine training, we really have to think about two different scenarios. So the first scenario is you need to look at your vine after you plant um, in the year. So if you plant in spring, look at your vine when, when it goes dormant and assess the growth strength of that vine. So if you have a very, very strong growth, which, which happens uh, a lot in, in the southeastern part of, of, of the southeast and southeastern part of, uh, of North Carolina and Georgia and South Carolina, that's a very, that's a different scenario than if you have a medium growth or even a weak growth uh, growing wine than here. A very strong grow wine, you can, you can in the most cases, start establishing a cordon. I only recommend this if it's a very, very strong growth and you do have really a lot of good wood to choose from. If you do not have a lot of good wood to choose from, it is easier and better to do, uh, to cut this wine back to two nodes and establish it again from those two nodes. That's very common practice. I recommend that. Uh, usually for most wines, and unless you do have very good wood to choose from, which you can use for two cordons. 
you have to keep in mind that that is going to be the wood which you're going to work with for the rest of the wine's life until you have to replace that cordon. So you want to choose something which is good and healthy and not um, just for the sake of it. So rushing it into the first year, into this, from the first into the second year, is never a good idea. But again, if you have very strong, strong growth, you can go ahead and do this. If you do this, I would only recommend to lay half the corn down and not the full entire length of the corn. And we're going to talk about this in a second why. But that's extremely important um, because you do want to have evening, even positioning and you do want to have all, each of those positions have an equal strength. And you can achieve that by laying down the corn in two steps rather than in one step. Um, again, for most vines, I would recommend, especially if you have weak growth or if you have a, a medium growth, cut those vines back to two nodes and let them grow again in year number two. So now in year number two, you want to be so at some point at this, at this point of stage so that you have some uh, uh, shoots to choose from. So what you would do is you would let your vine grow up to the wire. Uh, top one of the shoots which you feel is, is the best shoot for the trunk. Make sure that you have a, 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 a straight tra tra trunk. You don't want to wrap your trunk around like uh, around the, the bamboo stick or something. Um, top the, the, the trunk at the wire and then establish, three, establish four or five um, laterals which you will then choose from as your Cordons. So the reason we do four or five and not two is because we do want to have some insurance. And this red bar here shows you like the best zone to do this. And you can see that it's relatively close. And this is, this is not directly at the wire. We usually look in muscadines uh, about four to six inches below the wire where you do want to create the split. Um, uh, so you're going to have to be at this structure at some point uh, in in uh, either in year two for most vines, or if you have really strong vigor, you're going to have to have something like this in the first year to be able to establish your cordons. Um, as again, as I said, five to seven inches distance to the wire. This is the perfect zone to create your split. And um, and then in the next year, you would uh, you would basically go into the next year with two half cordons. So the reason for that is that uh, you do want to establish even positioning and you do want to establish even growth for each of those positions. And if you rush a cordon into like in, in the first year and the second year directly into the full length, it's 10 foot of cordon, that will give you uneven positioning and uneven growth over the entire cordon. So some cultivars do that more than others. Uh, very vigorous Carlos, for example, wouldn't show a lot of that, but uh, cultivars like Supreme or cultivars like... Um, uh, Magnolia or 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 um, or Darlene are actually showing a lot of uneven positioning and uneven growth over those positions if you rush your cordon uh, too fast. So uh, most of the cases you want to be at this structure after year two. That's a good structure to be after year two. So then you establish in year three the rest of the cordon. Uh, so. Again, we recommend two to three, sometimes four positions per foot of corn for, corn for the most cultivars. Again, the more vigorous your cultivar is, the more positions you can keep. Uh, make sure that you, that, you, that you select very good wood to create your corns with like good internode length and, and, and good, and, and good uh, healthy color and healthy pencil thick wood to do this. Um, and then I would establish four to five foot of corn in the first years and then the rest of that in the next year. Um, we try to do that from a downward facing node. So try to have the last node on your cord and be a downward facing node so that you can uh, wrap, that you can take that node and that wood to establish your next, your next cord. And um, what you want to avoid there is this, what, we, what, we, what I call the Emmy effect, where you do have a lot of growth in one area, a lot of growth in the other area, but not a lot of growth in the middle. Um, what you also want to avoid is like uneven spacing over the over your corn, which you have here, where you do have a lot of crowding here, a lot of crowding here, but you have like two to three foot here where you only have five positions. That is, those are the things which you do want to avoid. And a lot of that can be avoided directly by training your wine correctly. 
And you can see that here, this is a supreme wine. Again, the same picture, but it, it has been done here where the first part of the cordon was laid down after year two or three. And then the second was laid down a year later. You can see that here it came from a downward node and was then used a year later to establish the rest of the cordon. So that is a very good practice and it will allow you to, to develop an even uh, established uh, spacing of your, of your wines and also evenly, even growth of your wine. Again, it's never a good idea to rush things. If you train your wine, you, you are sticking with this wine for 30, 40 years in your vineyard. And so it is a, a, you want to get it right in the first place. And getting it right in the first place is be patient. Don't train your cordon directly over the direct length in the first year. Look at your vine in the first year. Make sure that if it's weak or medium growth, just cut it back to two notes and let it come again uh, in the second year. Um, I want to talk a little bit about trellis. Uh, we are on a, a single high wire bilateral cordon system. This is the en entire presentation is made for that kind of cordon system. We are a spur pruning system. What we want to do in this system is that we do want to uh, uh, establish our wines very close to the post, about three to four foot away from, from the post, so that part of the weight of that, of that uh, wood and of the fruit can actually lie on the post. That is extremely important if you do want to keep your, your straight trunks and, um, and if you don't want to put too much strength on your wire. Uh, so it would look like this. Um, uh, I can show you a picture here. You can see here very clearly. So this is a, this is a cordon uh, which was laid on the, on the uh, vineyard post to be established over that post. That allows um, uh, that allows a straight trunk structure to keep that allows the wine to keep a straight trunk a strong trunk structure, and to uh, to hold um, this um, the weight on the post. So that is that is extremely important. If you don't do that, you will end up with a lot of bent trunks, and and that will uh, make uh, entry with machinery and harvesting and even pruning much more complicated in the long term. So our take-home message, messages here are weak wines have to be trained differently than wines with good growth. Uh, you should split four to six inches below the wire, establish your spur positions from the very beginning and plant close to the post about three to four foot and remove some weight from the wire by putting your, your cordon onto the wire when you train your wine. Um, with that, I hope that there will be some questions and uh, in our next video, we will talk about muscadine pruning.